Let us all turn to God in prayer. Almighty eternal God, we bow our heads in thankfulness again, Lord, that we can come tonight to study your word, to understand a bit more of how we ought to love you, and also to seek your face in the place of prayer. Oh, what a blessed thing it is that thy children have this invitation to come to the house of prayer to pray to the living God. And Lord, we do ask that you be merciful to remove all tiredness of the body or every distraction of the mind. Lord, help each one of us from the youngest to the, to the most elderly to understand your word. And we seek to understand because we desire to know how to love you with all our minds. We also ask for fresh cleansing and washing in the blood of our Saviour. Knowing, O oh God, we have sinned against you in many ways. Sins of ignorance, sins that, are, that have been willful, O oh Father, we pray that you be merciful to forgive. Even as we desire to bear the fruits of repentance, Lord, grant us strength and help us to always respond. And now we ask, O oh God, that you teach thy children, each one of us, to know how to fulfill the first of all, the commandments, that we, when we face you face to face, Lord, we have no regrets, we have no shame. So help us tonight, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, we are at this juncture where we are learning about loving God with all our minds. God gave man the faculty of thinking, of understanding, that we may be able to have knowledge. And knowledge is not sufficient. When God says to love me with all your mind, I've given you that faculty so that you will use the mind, not just to gather knowledge, but understand clearly what it means to love me. The Christian must always know that the mind controls the heart and the soul, not the other way around. In the world, love is often something that is more oriented towards emotions, feelings, and uncontrollable emotions, uncontrollable feelings. That is why the world songs are always about falling in love. Falling means it's something you can't control. You, you fall. You can't hold yourself up. You just lose um, control of yourself, so you fall, fall in love. But when it comes to the Christian love of God, it's nothing like the world. In fact, the world promotes that kind of concept of love so that the Christian also seek that emotional high to love God. Here, God literally split hair for us. Can you really say the heart is, is the heart when, when medically the heart is just a pumping organ to pump blood, right? One of its key functions. The mind, to many, is like the brain, the grey matter, the soul, the innermost being. Now, God uses all these different aspects to help us know the interlinks. The heart is often mentioned as it thinketh in his own heart, as the man thinketh in his heart. In other words, the heart thinks. The heart has desires, the heart has um, affections, but the heart thinks. What is the thinking part of the heart? The mind, so to speak. So the mind must control the heart, and when the heart is controlled by the mind, slowly your soul will be also controlled, under control. So the Christian commandment, or rather the Christian fulfilling commandment, is something that is conscious. To fulfill this first of all commandments, is a conscious, deliberate, possible act on your part. But you can only act rightly. You can only know what to do in this commandment if you use your mind to understand and think. So it's a thinking love. That is why God, when the Lord himself um, explains this commandment, in the New Testament, he made it even clearer. 
to help us understand the great Shama with all the mind. So, for the mind to increase in understanding, it must meditate, of course, on God's word. That is why we are learning M of meditate. The motif, the motivation and the motive in your heart must be very clear. If you and I do not start with the right motive or motivation, then we will not love rightly. We will not last. It will not last. Now, Sunday, I was trying to help someone understand something. The person is struggling with some doctrines. I spoke with the person and, uh, for quite long, and this person kept saying that, um, you know, don't say anything that affects my, my thinking about Christ's love for me. The reason why I became a Christian, the reason why I left other religions, the reason why I made a decision and crossed over to Christianity is because I read about the great love of Christ to me. And I told the person, well, we've been studying in prayer meeting. Now, when we love because Christ loved us, what love is that, Eugene? When we love, when we love God because Christ, because, simply because Christ loves us, what love is that, ultimately? I love God because He loved me so much. It's self-love. In the end, it's self-love. The mind must be very conscious. You can feel all that. So it's another case of explaining that you must love God first and foremost for who He is, understand who He is, appreciate who He is. We can never fully appreciate. He's infinite. We must love God with that consciousness that, Lord, God, I love you simply because of who you are, then what you have done for me. We can never love God to the extent that we ought to love Him until we see Him for who He is. Then what He has done for us has far greater meaning. Then the person says, well, you know, I don't know about that, but I'm not at that stage. So the Christian must not say, I'm not at that stage, and my main thing is, you know, I, I chose Christianity because of God's great love for me. Now, there's a dangerous love. And the person shared, you know, my life has changed so much since I came back to church. Even my colleagues say I've changed so much. But there's always still that danger, that danger. When the Christian does not love God, or rather, when the Christian feels that I'm just, I'm loving God with all my heart, with my soul and my heart is just so, so, um, so broken down by the love of God. It is dangerous. Because it's just a matter of time, it, it will become more and more about me, about me, about me. But this great commandment, this first of all the commandments, is always about God. About God. Loving God is simply about Him. That is all. But this can only happen when the Christian is clear. You make effort with all your mind to understand from the Bible what God means when He says, love me, and why He says that. All right? So understand why we are taking time with the M. Maybe the rest, the E, the D, the I, it will be faster. But the M, the starting point, is crucial. It's very, very important. So, we have studied that immediately after God gave them the great Shema, here, O Israel, then we saw, he said, tell your children, all right, tell your children, um, when they ask, say, we must obey the Lord. It is for our good. And then he says, tell your children, we are the most blessed people on the earth. Among all nations, we are the most blessed. Then we studied what is blessings, right? What are blessings? So I want to draw that, that framework of what we must always let our mind be um, guided by. So to love God with all our mind, we must have a framework. Our minds must be in certain frame of mind. 
to love God. Quickly. children through the covenant the number one chief end of man to glorify God and then we have the first of all the commandments what's the first of all the commandments the great the great Shema all right the great Shema all the number ones how are all the number ones linked God deal with man through the covenant <clears throat> in the covenant the first one um, uh, all right, over there, uh, Josiah. The first P, after so many months. Very good, right? The first P. Let's always remember the first P in a covenant. Let's start with purpose. Let's not start with promises. Okay, then, then parties, right? Then promises. All right, the three P's of covenant, the three P's of covenant. What's the purpose? The purpose ultimately is the chief end of man, which is to glorify God, right? The chief end of man. So, we have the chief end of man, and we have man, parties, God and man here, and the promises, in the promises, where does the great Shema lie? Where does the great Shema lie? The great Shema is the first of all commandments. It's a commandment. So here we have commandments, right? Commandments. Why? Because you obey, obey blessings. You disobey God's commandment, cursings. Correct? All right. This frame of mind, you read the whole Bible. This is the framework that you must always have so that when you meditate, when you think of anything is within here, within here. Now, what I want to cover tonight is, is about this blessing still. So what are blessings? Do you remember? What are blessings? Blessings are, uh, let me try, Thomas, do you remember? Blessings are? Okay, very good. Blessings are defined as whatever God gives to us that is used for Him, that's useful for Him, right? Blessings. So we know that things that are God, give, God gives to us, not to bless us, not for our use. Blessings, always remember whenever you read the Bible, whenever you meditate and you say, Lord, I want to love you with all, your, all my mind. You think within here and you say, I want blessings, Lord. Why do I want blessings? I want blessings... I want blessings because blessings over here is part of the covenant and it helps me fulfill my purpose. Blessings are meant for us to fulfill our purpose to God, the chief end of men. So that is blessings. Then we talk about the other thing. So, so tell your children, Obey God, obey God, means obey God's commandments. It is good for us. It is good for us. Now, why do, what did we learn about we are the most blessed people on earth? Ben, do you remember last week? All right, we are the most blessed people on earth because we are the ones, we are the party. We are the party that God chose. God chose to fulfill His purpose. We are the parties which God says, I give you the privilege to fulfill my purpose. It's a privilege to glorify God. And the whole point is this. Please know, the great Shema, the great Shema 
is just at this part. The great Shema is just at this part. In other words, Christian, understand, be clear in our minds, have this thinking. The world's love very often has not much purpose. If there is a purpose, why do you think someone loves someone? Why do you think so? Jeremy, in the world, when the world says, I love someone, usually there's it's just some random purpose or but mostly it's what purpose for self usually love is selfish in the world right why do, why does someone want to uh, want to get married because I don't want to be lonely it's like that it's usually about self why do you want to marry someone because he is good to me or she is good to me right so very often it's self purposed but the thinking Christian, when I say, I want to love God, what you are saying is, God, I want to love you, then it means I want to fulfill your purpose. It is not a self about me at all. So, love me with all your mind. Think rightly. Lord, I want blessings. I want blessings. You see, just down here, I want blessings because I love you. I want blessings because I love you. Very often it's I want blessings because I love myself. I, I want blessings, God, because I love my family. Lord, tonight I'm going to pray for this and pray for that because of something I want, something I want for my family. But for the thinking Christian, Lord, I love you. I want blessings so that I can use these blessings to fulfill your purpose. Help me to glorify you. Christ came. He said, I came to do my Father's will and to finish it. What was His will? To die on the cross? Actually, what's the will of the Father for, for, the, for the Son? Yung. Right? We always say, my meat is to do your will and to finish it. Okay, the active obedience and the passive obedience was what Christ came to do. For what? Uh, Edward. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. <laughs> how, but how do you know? Because most of the time people say the active and passive obedience is to save us, right? And then to, Christ went to the cross to save us. How do you know it's for the glory of God? <laughs> because it's always the right answer. All right? Turn to John 17, please. Christ was going to the cross already. <clears throat> Acts, uh, John 17. Now, this is definitely about him praying about his crucifixion, right? Now, um, let's read verses, um, verse 1. Let's read together. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. These are the opening words of Christ in his high priestly prayer. And then read verse, um, read verse 4 and 5. Verse 4 and 5, reading. I have glorified thee on earth. I finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and with the glory which I had before, with thee before the world was. So, Christ said that, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. But when he said that, what did he say? I have glorified thee on earth. Christ said, my meat is to do, do the will of the Father and to finish it. Is that purpose, is his meat, his desire to do the Father's will, is it to save us? No. He made it clear in his prayer was the chief end of men. Even Christ himself came to fulfill that. So now your thinking, your framework must shift from it's about my salvation, everything is about my salvation, to everything is about the glory of God. Lord, I love you. Please bless me. And I am the most blessed person on earth. 
when I am doing your will. And just like my Saviour, his clear will was to glorify you. To love God with all our minds is to have this understanding, this clear thinking, Lord, everything that I ask for is asked out of love for you, and therefore please answer so that I can have whatever I need to fulfill my chief end. That is love. Love is not just crying when you're singing, um, um, designed to serve him even. Love with all the mind begins with everything that I do, Lord, everything that I ask for, Lord, is to fulfill this. Then you are loving. Then you are loving God. Tonight we want to cover this area, this word. In our, in, in our meditation, in our meditations, in our thinking, in our thinking to love God. We must have the right concept of blessings and blessed, which we already have established, which we have known. Then we want to now read. No read. Don't know what happened to the read. We now want to look at this in this framework to guide our thinking in loving God. Because um, one of the biggest challenge for a Christian in life, our whole life on earth after salvation, the biggest challenge for us is always to obey God's commandment. Isn't it true? That's how God says, say if you obey me. Every day we go through 24 hours a day, all the time in our waking moments, our struggle is obeying God's commandment. Why is that so? Look there carefully. Remember, obeying commandments is part of the great Shema because it in, it is in itself is a commandment. Obeying God's commandment to love Him is, is about obeying a commandment. Everything that we do is to obey the guidelines, the rules, the, the laws that God gives us. How, how is all this linked? Now, how did Christ, you're in John, right? Turn to John 14. You know this verse very well. And I hope tonight your thinking changes, not to some strange thinking, changes to the right thinking about commandments. John 14. Now, here, Christ talk about love. You say, Lord, I want to love you. Can you help me to understand how to love you? John 14, 15, let's read together. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, read verse um, 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Verse 23, let's read together. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Verse 24, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Christ define and explain what it means to love God three times. If you love three times positively, if you love me, keep my commandments. The person that keep my commandments, that is the one that loves me. And then the fourth time in verse 24, he says it the other way. He that loveth me not. Let me make it clear to you explicitly clear to you, if you don't keep my commandments, then you don't love me. Now, Christ is the one who taught, who explained, who made clearer this great Shema. Look at the chart over, look, the, look at the drawing over there. Where does commandment falls? Commandment falls within the promises of the covenant. And then you look in the commandments, if you keep commandments, you have blessings, correct? 
How, how do you get blessings? By keeping God's commandments. Because God said, if you keep my commandments, there will be blessings. How do you get, command- how do you get blessings? Co- keeping commandments. How, um, what are blessings for? To be used for my chief end. God give me intelligence. God give me a job. God give me family. God give me um, health. God give me uh, wealth. God give me whatever. Whatever that you ask for. Blessings is because you want to use it to live for God. Only, that's all. So when you think about this in scriptures, the Christian obeys God's commandments so that I get blessings, so that the blessings will enable me to live out my chief end because I love God and want to please Him. That is the framework of the mind. In everything that you choose, do, think, as you do your devotion, that is how we think. So, what is the point about this? You may think it's a bit convoluted, but you must engage your mind to think. Love me with all your mind, God says. Please engage, please think, and please connect the dots. What are you trying to connect? Why is it important to connect those dots? Because I said earlier, the biggest challenge for a Christian is to obey commandments. The reason is because we obey commandments for the wrong reasons. Therefore, we look at commandments with wrong perspective. If you think within this framework, my whole purpose and desire is to glorify God, then I need His blessings. Because on my own, I have no ability, I have no resources, I don't even have the privilege if God doesn't use me. God, if I obey you, I am in a good position to achieve my chief end. Now do you understand how Christ, or rather, um, Christ shortcut everything and summarize everything in just one statement. If you love me, keep my commandments. But the whole in-between is this. The whole in-between is, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Because when you keep my commandments, I will bless you. When I bless you, you are able to fulfill your chief end. But if you are not interested in fulfilling your chief end, then you will always see commandments as a chore, as, as something that is not pleasant to you. The reason why a Christian would delight in the law of the Lord. You see, I delight in the law of the Lord. I want to obey God. Yes, it means you love Him. But the reality is, you are saying, Lord, I want to know your commandments because I want to fulfill them, because I love you. Now turn to Psalm 1. Quickly, Psalm 1. <laughs> Let's read Psalm 1. Now let's read verses 1 and 2 together. Reading, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now you get the picture. When you read this, what comes to your mind? Blessed is the man. I am the most blessed person on earth. Why? Because I am fulfilling God's purpose in my life. Until the Christian come to that, we we learned that last week. Until the Christian come to this point where you truly in your heart, in your mind is so clear, I am really the most blessed, my most blessed state is when I am obeying God because I am fulfilling His will, you will not love God rightly. If you still think, no, if, if, if I take this kind of jobs, if I do this, if, if I 
marry this person or don't get married, if I have or if I don't have, whatever it is, if you think that if I have these things, then I am blessed, even if it is not God's will for me, if deep in your, side, deep in your heart, that is who you are, you are not blessed at all. If you look at that, you will not get God's blessing. You will not have His blessing because you are not obeying His commandments and therefore you will not fulfill your chief end, which is what Satan wants. But look at verse 2, right? Look at verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. When a person truly knows this is the most blessed state for a man to obey his commandments. When the most blessed state in your mind is, I want to be fulfilling God's will in my life. Remember this word. We talk about Christ. My meat is to finish the will of the Father, and the will of the Father, and his and he finished what? He finished glorifying God. So now here, Psalm 1, verse 2. When will your delight be in the Lord? Only when you truly believe obeying God, doing His will, makes me the most blessed man. Now, by the way, the word blessed also means happy. You're happiest, though life is difficult, but you're happiest. Because you know that that you know that by that you will get blessings to fulfill his purpose. And then you say, in his law doth he meditate day and night. In God's law he meditates. It's no longer I I really don't like to obey God's commandments. In fact, the less I learn about God's commandment, the better. The less I realize that I need to obey this, obey that, obey this, obey that. When he's when God says he meditates. In his law day and night means he keeps trying to find out, Lord, in your law, what else in your law do I need to know, God? Because the more I know your law, the more I obey you, and whatever law that I have already known, the better I understand that law and the more closely I'm obeying to exactly your standards, I am going to get more blessings. And the more blessed I am, the more I am able to achieve my chief end. Do you now understand why the, pers the person who knows that the most blessed state is to do the will of God loves to meditate on God's word? And that is why God says, now, if you love me, you will keep my commandments because you would love to keep my commandment. You love to keep my commandment because you love to be fulfilling my will in your life. The commandments of God no longer are a, um, something that is unpleasant. In fact, the other, the opposite happens. Whenever you are not obeying, you are very unhappy. Anything that prevents you from obeying, you are very unhappy. And you can't be happy until you get out of the situation. Why? Because of the great commandment. Lord, I want to be always obeying your commandment because that's the only way I can show you my love in glorifying you. That is what it is. Now, I hope you begin to understand that when a Christian resists or doesn't like commandments, in fact, that is how the world wants us to think. Don't like laws, don't like rules. The reason why is when a person begins to dislike law and rules, is when the person becomes very self-centered. It's my right, that is all. The person would not even want to think about loving God. And to hear, even for a Christian over time, if your thinking change, to hear that, you mean my most blessed state is when I'm living totally for God and I want blessings to be used for Him? They will resist. No, no, no. I love God. I became a Christian because He loves me. That is outside the framework. Now, then this is the other important aspect that I want to talk about is this. How to reach the state where 
you know you are loving God with all your mind in the sense of, Lord, I am happiest, most blessed when I have your blessings by obeying your commandments and I have now your blessings to be able to glorify you and to live out your will in my life. What is the barrier? What is the greatest barrier? We always know. It is always self. This commandment on love, the, the right answer always is what's the great barrier? It's always self, all right? It's always self. What does it look like, this blessed man in Psalm 1? What does it look like? How come he is like that and I am not like that? Now, let's talk about what it, is look, what it looks like. How do I know I'm loving God with all my mind? Um, and like Christ, his only desire, his only will is to glorify God. Now, it looks like this. I was trying to think of an analogy, all right? It's not a very good analogy, but, but basically it is a person who is totally, or his will is totally lost in the will of God or lost to the will of God. Christ said, my will is to do the Father's work and to finish it. Christ's will on earth was, is totally lost to the Father's will. And his will was to glorify him, to fulfill chief end, the chief end. He set the example. A man who is blessed, a man who delights to do God's commandment is one who has no will of his own anymore. He just wants God to show him what is your will. What are the laws? Your known will. Just tell me, Lord. I have no will of my own. You keep showing me. That's why his delight is to meditate on that, to keep finding out more wills of God. Meditating on it day and night. The whole day, that, that is all he wants, to fulfill that will. To love God with all our minds is to be so clear, Lord, your, your chief end is all I care about. And when I, ob, ob, when I receive your commandments, I'm so glad to receive it because I know this helps me to get blessings to help me to live out my chief end because I have no will of my own. I, can't, I was trying to think of an analogy. So that is the concept. You delight in God's law because you have nothing to resist, because you have no law in your own heart that you want to obey for yourself, to get things for yourself. The world teaches us to have your own mind constantly in school. Have your own mind. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Is it true, Anna? In school, can you think of any example where the schools keep, keep trying to teach you you must have your own mind. Don't let people tell you what you do. What do they say, for example? Can't think of any. Anyone? Even for adults, even for adults, have your own mind. Can you think of any? In school, in university, at work? Uh, Rowena? Push to stand up for yourself, is it? Yep, all right, push to stand up for yourself. Now, if to have your own mind for a Christian to mean, I'm a Christian, don't force your beliefs and your, your ways on me. I have my own mind. I want to stand on my own beliefs. That's fine, right? But you know that is not what the world is talking about. The world is talking about your own desires, your own ambitions, your own, um, your own um, um, aims. You must stand up for them. Now, conceptually, that is not evil if you apply it for a Christian to have convictions. But once we have our own mind, that is where we will not be able to love God with all our mind. All our minds must be given and bent, and the best is totally lost to His mind, His will, what He wants, what He thinks. 
So the example I thought of was this. Um, actually, I didn't tell Sharon I was gonna share this. I should have told her first. I hope she doesn't mind. Um, Sharon doesn't have a mind of her own. <laughs> and I think if, if other people, the people of the world, knows her in our marriage, they will say she's the, she's the worst example of modern woman, <laughs> all right? Um, she doesn't have a mind of her own. Uh, after she gets married, everything is about me. Everything is about me. It's totally su total submission to me. Everything is about me. What she dresses, she don't have a mind of her own. Well, of course, she used to have. But whenever she, 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 she dresses, she'll say, is this okay? When other people say, is this okay, is it, do I look nice in this, right? All she's asking is, so is this what you want me to wear? <laughs> That's all. Whatever she buys, you like this? You know, sometimes outside, um, when if I do need her to buy something, and then the sales girls are helping, they say, you like this? This one can? This one can? Sometimes I feel terrible because I can see the sales girl looking at me like, what kind of husband is this? You know, wife is so afraid and it's nothing to do with what she likes. It's totally what he likes. There was once I was paying for something and she was going on and on. And the sales girl was, the sales girl was literally slamming things in front of me and staring at me. What is a terrible husband? The world does not understand this. Even eating. Whatever the whole day is, what do you want to eat? You want to eat this or eat that? She doesn't think about what she wants to eat. Totally lost. Now that I think... I'm trying to think of an example. I'm not trying to glorify her, but I'm trying to think in real life. Actually, we do have such behaviors towards people that we love. When we say we love God, is our will, like we sing, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, right? Till my will be lost in thine. Remember the words? Till my will be lost in thine. In my mind, in my heart, I am only thinking Lord, my mind is only thinking about what you want. And therefore, whatever you want, in other words, translated, commands, is my delight. That is all. And what God commands is the chief end of man, able to be achieved through obeying his commandments. A great Shema is given to us to fulfill the chief end. That is why I keep drawing this, to help you realize that. Now you know why the Lord says, if you love me, if any man love me, he will keep my commandments because your will is lost in his. Now we, we chose, a, I, was, I was thinking of changing the hymn. Um, let's turn to 414. I thought, well, I didn't, I wanted to change it to draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. Then when I looked at the hymn the chairman chose, I said, oh, no need to change, there's no need to change. Now this hymn writer's mind, this hymn writer's mind, the frame of mind when the person wrote this hymn is very biblical. You long for sweet peace. Four and four, for faith to increase, earnestly, fervently prayed. You cannot have this blessedness, all right? You cannot have this rest of be perfectly blessed until your all on the altar is laid. Now, the, ref the theme is, is your all on the altar laid. Until we lay our will on the altar, the last thing that holds us back, you can give up many things, but you and I know the one thing that is the most difficult to lay on the altar is our will what we want in this life. It can even be something that is biblical and good, but it is not God's will for you. The most difficult thing is the will. Until your all, in other words, your will, until you, the last thing must be sacrificed, burnt, like a burnt sacrifice, totally consumed. Burnt sacrifices are totally consumed until it doesn't exist anymore. Verse 2, would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment always? You must do his sweet will. I was thinking, wow, this hymn is perfect for tonight. You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill. But on the altar, your all must be laid. How can you do his will? 
How can you be like Christ? My will is to finish the Father's work, and His will revealed is to the chief to glorify Him. Verse three, you can ne- you will never know. Oh, we can, I, oh, we c- never can know what the will what the Lord will bestow of the blessings which for which we have pay, prayed till our body and soul He does fully control, and when our all near altar is laid. Look at the blessings. You will never know the blessedness of, of living out the chief end of man. Loving God with your all is the most blessed thing. But you can never know that. You, never, you will never know that blessing that God will bestow in your life. To know that joy, that contentment, until your will is lost in His. And then, last verse, who can tell of the love He will send from above and how happy, blessed our hearts will be made of that fellowship sweet we shall share at His feet when our all on the altar is laid. Very appropriate. So, beloved hearers, I hope you get more glimpse about what it means to love God with your mind, with all your mind. You must be thinking within a framework, understand that framework, and convinced of that framework and let your will be totally lost in that framework let us let us sing this closing hymn we have uh, we can sing for a few minutes and then we start our prayer 414